this isn't about a men's movement. It's about men very proactively uh, working to support women's rights and gender equality. So when I was studying at UC Berkeley um, in the early 90s, I was assaulted five times in a two-year period, kind of on the streets, randomly. The one time I intervened in a domestic violence dispute um, in North Oakland, near where I lived, and I thought this guy was kicking a dog, and then as I got closer, I realized he was kicking a woman, and so I ran up and shouted at him. And he grabbed me in just the sort of single motion and threw me up against the storefront window and um, punched me in the stomach and kicked me in the head. Um, and while that was the only time I was physically hurt, um, it was not the most damaging um, because the other times were um, totally uh, surprising. The one time I was walking down Telegraph Avenue, I turned past Cody's bookstore I had been studying at Cafe Med, which was my usual study spot. And um, I heard a noise and I turned around and there were about six young men running at me. And I turned a little bit further and one of them was already up in the air coming down to kick me in the head. And I managed to move and he kicked me in the back and I stumbled. Um, and I was at that point kind of, you know, a reasonably competitive track and field runner. So I was able to outrun them, but I ran through traffic down towards my house. Um, and I remember just sort of shouting, like, I didn't do anything. Um, and just a week prior to that, or a week or two prior to that, a man had been jumped in the mission district and beaten to death. Um, and I always felt like, had I actually hit the ground there, I would have been in very real trouble. There was an empty parking lot. And I think I would have got really badly worked over. And um, then there was another occasion I was walking down the street and um, I was just chatting to my, my, my girlfriend at the time. And um, I felt this kind of punch to my chest and I turned to see where it was coming from. And then someone hit me in my jaw. And um, so those events, and there were two others, um, once where a group of us were attacked by um, a group of young men um, left me really, really freaked out on the streets. I mean, understandably, right? Um, and so I didn't have the language for it, um, but clearly I had a version of post-traumatic stress disorder. I wouldn't leave my house unless I was on my bicycle. I really could feel I would go into kind of hypervigilance mode uh, when I was out in the streets at night. And it really ate away at me. And it was right during the time that we were very involved in anti-war activism around the Gulf War. And at the same time, my younger sister had had a psychotic break and been diagnosed as schizophrenic. So it was very easy for me to interpret the PTSD as a sign of impending psychotic break, right? So I added all this additional anxiety to it. And um, I walked around with this sort of deep stress, constantly trying to make sense of my reaction to people on the streets. And, um, and, you know, like so many young men, I was unable and unwilling to talk about it very openly. I kind of kept it to myself. Um, and my partner at the time, Paola was her name, um, said to me like, you have to go and talk to someone about this. You know, I, um, can't support you in the ways that you need. Like, I don't know how. And I said to her, um, I said, you know, I can't do that because if I go and talk to someone, I will forever surrender my autonomy. That's the language I used. Um, and it was such a clear, like when I look back on it, right, it was so much about gender norms and about male gender norms. And this notion that to seek help was to be weak and to kind of put yourself on a pathway towards always being weak. Um, and, you know, thank goodness, um, I then subsequently started working at the Larkin Street Youth Center with homeless and runaway youth in a, what was a clinical milieu. There were lots of therapists. And so I began to understand that world better um, and started to then date a therapist who said like, I'm happy to be a therapist in my work life, but not in my private life. 
go see one. Um, and, you know, fortunately, I followed up on that and, um, you know, have come to really understand um, how important it is to have places that one can go to discuss difficulties and to have good people who are trained on these issues. Um, and so that, I think, altered my life in many important ways. I was really, in some ways, vexed by this question of violence. I'd grown up in a violent society. Um, I had been encouraged to use violence as a kid um, in response to anyone who teased me for having a funny last name. And then I was assaulted violently. And so this question of like violence and what's my capacity for violence? Why did other people perpetrate violence against me? Um, and then working with homeless and runaway youth who regularly experience violence on the streets, right? They were running away from violence and then they experienced often sexual violence on the streets, um, many of them turning to sex work to get by. Um, and so violence became this really important issue for me to understand. And um, I was encouraged to go and check out this group called Men Overcoming Violence. I think I told you about that when we spoke previously. And um, all of a sudden I had an opportunity to listen into conversations kind of all week about men's violence, what drove it, how to deal with it, um, what community responses to it might look like. And it was utterly fascinating, um, you know, not least to hear the men themselves describe these complicated histories that they had with violence. I had so many men say to me, I know better than anyone how wrong it is to assault one's partner and to do that in front of your children. I was one of those children, they would say. And so you helped me explain how I've ended up being the man that I said I would never be. And so, you know, intellectually, it was super challenging to make sense of what I was seeing at work. Um, really, really interesting and inspiring to watch men, um, many of whom, you know, very stigmatized and I think felt like pariahs grapple with. Um, how to change their behavior. And so it's been enormously rewarding work, um, all of which I think emanates from these earlier difficult experiences. Um, and so, you know, while I would never want to repeat those years of kind of anxiety and mental health challenges I had after being assaulted, um, there was a silver lining in that, which is that it put me on this pathway to thinking about um, men's violence as a social justice issue that I had an investment in, in addressing. Um, so that would be, um, and of course, part of that work was finding a community of men who I used to meet with informally. Um, we'd meet at each other's houses and have kind of, you know, discussion groups about male socialization, about our struggles as men in our relationships, about, um, you know, our commitments to gender equality in many ways, um, just like women had done and still do in the 70s and 80s and 90s, sort of consciousness um, groups. So, yeah, let me, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll leave it there. No, I mean,